good evening, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I'm Simon Wellock. I'm the South Humber Warden. Farings is one of seven reserves I manage along the south bank of the Humber. And I'm going to talk to you tonight, particularly about the work we've been doing for Bittens. So why manage reed beds? Um, initially, they're, firstly, they're a successional stage, um, so they don't stay reed beds for long if you don't manage them. It's a rare and declining habitat, full of specialist species, bitten being one, and they are all designated as triple SIs. When the trust took on firings um, in the early 1980s, the reed beds were already quite old. They were full of, of reed litter, a lot of scrub, and they needed a lot of work to bring them into, into good health and good conservation um, condition. Reed bed management should be aiming to do two things, really. One is to either stop or slow down natural succession, and the other is, is the more tweaking at habitat enhancement, creating structure, open pools, wet, wet edges, reedy ditches, these types of things. And that's exactly what the Trust did and still do. We cut and burn two hectares of reed every year. Um, here's some old pictures of, of Lionel and his team. Some of this reed was in the old days was used for thatching, but nowadays that uh, is much less the case. And back in the day, they also created lots of lovely wet edge and new ditches, um, particularly with bitten in mind. Um, also a lot of water control features, new pipe work, sluices, things that allow us to, to control the, the water levels in each of the individual pits to move water around. And as you can see, top left, that's the early 80s, a very dry reed bed with um, just the big deep pits left bit behind by the clay industry and then top right with all these fantastic wet edges and the new ditches, new pools, um, perfect for bitterns. We also created new pits um, with the help of North Links Council and um, other partners, extracting the clay, planting and growing reed and creating new reed beds um, to the south of Firings Road. And it worked. Bitten started breeding for the first time since the early 1970s. This was in, in 2000, um, a huge success story. And at that point in time, Bittens were down to, you know, less than 20 um, calling males in the whole country. It's a massive success. But as I've said earlier, reed beds are successional and time takes its toll. So it went from top left, all the fancy ditches, to bottom right, no ditches, no bitterns. Just part of the natural process that, that takes place within um, a wetland habitat that wants to become something else. If we think about what bitterns want, a large amount of water within the reed bed is, is integral to that. 30% um, of a bitterns home range is pools, ditches, uh, connected mirrors. They like a huge amount of reed water interface. So that, again, that's why the ditches are so important. And how are we going to address this? Well, initially, North Links Council came on board as partners. And over two, two winters, we create, recreated by cutting and raking with a truck saw almost four kilometres of, of redundant ditch. And it worked. Bittens came back as a breeder for the first time since 2004. But as you can see on the right hand side there, using the truck saw was only a short term fix. The reed soon regrows and it's obvious really that big machinery is what was is what's actually needed. And that's what we did. So a combination of funders from donations, a GoFundMe appeal, and then latterly a huge amount of money from Biffa and we've recreated 4.85 kilometers of, of ditch over the last two winters. It's a sort of three part process really. So initially you get the digger in uh, with a big flail head or a, um, a forest mulcher, and that clears a lot of the scrub out of the way, the encroaching scrub, and also allows the, the machine safe access around the perimeter of the wetlands. 
And then the big reach machine comes in, 18 meter reach, creating these 10 meter wide wiggly edge ditches, lots of extra edge. Um, sort of a meter and a half to two meters in the middle so that they don't read up and then shallowing out neatly to the, to the edges. And normally that creates a huge amount of, of detritus, floating um, reed rhizomes and stuff that if you leave it will just effectively sink and become regrowers reed bed. So that needs to be taken out and we use truck soles with the raking mechanism on the front to, to clear that. You can see two truck soles working in tandem here. This is the, the Barton reed bed end of the reserve last winter. See these lovely stepped edges, so they dub, doubling the amount of edges that a straight line ditch would would have, and uh, just yeah, getting all that detritus out so that the the ditch remains clear. And this is a drone of that end. Six months earlier, that part of the reed bed had been completely dry, other than that little pool in the middle, and uh, this is all brand new, newly created, and you know, very impressive when you when you when you see it come to fruition. And the Bittens like it. This was from 2000. This is one of the, the booming males that was, his territory seemed to be preferred to be booming right on the edge of one of the, the brand new ditches. Uh, obviously great for visitors too. We've done more than that though, not just the new ditches, but we've created over a kilometer of these temporary channels over the last couple of winters which obviously increases the amount of wet edge um, and open water within the reed beds, fantastic for bitterns and, and other species. But again, also massively increases the, your likelihood of seeing bitterns. And we've exported this work elsewhere. So um, at Pasture Wharf, over a kilometer of new ditch has been dug out, cleared out by the truck saws. Um, and then this, winter, this summer, we had breeding bitterns there for the first time in over 30 years. And these are some temporary channels that we created last winter at Dawson City. So we're hoping that this will exactly, you know, do exactly the same, really. It would be nice to have got proper diggers in there, but these temporary channels should work, should increase the wet edge, should allow bittens to, to at least start using the site more frequently. People say it's all about bittens. Oh, it's all about bittens. It's all you ever talk about. Well, it's not. The ditches allow us to move water around the site. It's a habitat in its own right. They're full of aquatic plants, invertebrates, aquatic mammals like um, otters, and water voles, water shrew, they act as fish nurseries. They're superb for potchard and obviously they're very, very good for bitterns. Um, this year we had three nests, fledging seven young, which I think is probably the most since the 1950s up here. Um, and our reserves on the Humber had five bitten nests last year. So the work is very successful and very expensive. 